Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the Golden Text Type Effect tutorial. And this is one of my favorite tutorials and I imagine it's obvious, but I love the effect of this and I'm happy to share it with you today. So I've got my colors on my left hand side and I've got these polka dots, that's polka dot patterns, um, I think they're medium, which are slightly opaque on a radio background of dark, a dark blue to a lighter is saturated blue all right let's get straight into it first we're going to create our golden text so go to the text tool and i think you can also press t for the text tool or f8 and then we're going to pick our font and our font is a nice free font with a weird name thirty and that's t-h-i-r-t-h-y <laughs> Right, so, oh, yeah, let's go ahead and just type this in. I'm going to type in golden. Come on, baby, yourself. Golden. Make sure that the G is a capital. And go back to the furphy. And then we're going to hold control and just scale that up so you can see. Good. So, this is our text. Now, I've already created text myself but I did need to show you how you how I did it and here's the golden text that I have for myself this has been scaled to proportion to the same proportions as the tutorial so that we can get equal and very similar results good now right now this is a text object we need to change this to a path to continue so we're gonna go to object or oh, sorry path object to path Good, and each one of these is a path. And uh, we need one more step before we continue. Also, is that we need to unify all these paths. So I'm going to go to path and union. Good, and we have one solid path. So for the next step, we're going to go to extensions, and we're going to go to generate path and motion. Good, and I have the values here ready, but it's 230, uh, magnitude 10. But just before, well, let's apply it first. You know, but you can generally guess. Okay, the magnitude is a little bit small. You know, but if you're wondering about the angle of the motion, you know, you can generally guess the angle by observing the degrees. So just using this circle as a reference to help us out. So that you know what I'm talking about here. Let's center this. Right, so you can imagine that um get some text here. 360. So that we can see what's going on here. One eighty and uh, two seventy, and then ninety at the bottom. So, whenever using the motion tool, you can understand that it's going to move like this. Three sixty is about here, ninety is here, forty five is in the middle here, one eighty. So, we want ours to come up. That's the direction of the motion we're looking at. So we're somewhere between 180 and 270. And we're seeing more of the top than we are seeing of. We're seeing about equal the top and the size. So we can anticipate somewhere between here. Perhaps 210, 220. Good. As for the magnitude, I'm not sure how it does the pixels for the magnitude. I haven't quite worked that one out yet. But I know that this is how the degrees work. So if you're looking to understand the direction, if you follow this 360, 90, 180, 270, you'll be able to anticipate how the motion is going to operate. So it's going to go again, go again to generate from path motion. And this is obviously too small. So I'm going to try 25 and apply. Oh, let's make sure it's selected. Good. 
station generate path motion let's try 25 and apply and see how that looks still a little bit on the small side I'm gonna go one more because you see like when I did this before because I did this just before I started the tutorial you know um 10 was the correct magnitude now 10 is too small so I'm not quite sure how the units are calculated for the magnitude be interested to find out but I, I'm not sure alright it's seems to be highlighting everything but that's okay I'll just change this into a different color or black okay um, it's still small but we're gonna go ahead and work with this good so for the next part now what we're gonna do is actually make this middle text gold with the golden sheen so we have I'm gonna have a linear gradient so I'm gonna go to our gradient tool on in our toolbox and just pull down or oh, pull up no pull down and like so we're going to add hold control and double click to create a gradient stop let's take off this snap and in the gradient stop middle we're going to select this yellow right here or this one well this yellow right here is good and then we're going to select this brown down here to complete the transition and let's just select this yellow and decrease it just decrease it on this side give us some more sickly gold here alright and this looks about right yeah this looks about good then what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and give it this highlight so i'm just going to duplicate it with control and d duplicate it one more time and move the duplicate down and we just want to see this blue edge here so we just move the duplicate down enough so that we can see this nice blue edge good and we're going to select both the duplicate and the blue edge and we're going to go to path and difference so we see that we have the blue edge left and we're going to select you know this yellow right here and it's going to decrease the saturation of this yellow a bit awesome so we can't see the effect of the edge just yet but we are going to see it pretty soon and I'm just going to go and change this to brown and we can see how the edge is looking really nice good so we've got our basis for the golden text so the next part of it is actually quite simple in understanding but it's a tedious process and that is the process of unifying all of these sections right here go to path and union path and union and basically we're going to have to unify all of these so that we can apply one gradient at a time path and union and don't have to apply it to several segments over the period path and union good I may just, just, in fact I will just skip this portion of the video path and union you know and then come back and rejoin you when all of this is finished but essentially what you need to do is that you need to unify all of these segments here and you have to take care when unifying them to make sure that you get every single one path and union so that when you are ready to apply your gradient you know you have just one path per um, section here to deal with you don't have several paths and I'm just going to go path and union 
good so I'm just gonna go ahead and join you back once that's completed okay joining you back so I've gone ahead and unified all of the paths here that need to be unified break break some apart for other reasons but all of them here are unified so we can begin to add gradients to these so selecting our gradient tool we're just gonna pull up so just click once and we're gonna pull up and for this one I'm just gonna go ahead and sever it here you want to make sure that the paths where there are massive bends in the shape that the paths are separate and this will help to make the gradients more believable yes you could use a gradient mesh for this you know um, I have considered that but you know generally I think a linear gradient is good just just the same for this but you can indeed use a gradient mesh for this also let's go ahead and select so I'm going to select that gold right there and at the top I'm going to go to the lighter end of the gold spectrum and here we have a major bend so I'm just going to go ahead and sever this about here good and I'm going to carry it up I'm going to make this yellow here. See, I still got some paths to add. In fact, let's um, let me just lift this up. Alright, so it's just this one. Good. And I'm going to use for this one. I'm going to use yellow to a light color here. We're assuming the light source is relatively from the top of our text. Let's go ahead and add gradient pieces here. Select this piece, and select that piece. Good. good and wherever you have yourself a massive bend you want to make sure that you have a darker on most occasions it's going to be a darker shade of this gold so add another gradient stop and pick this orange here lift this up good uh, we just need a bit more contrast with this bright yellow make it brighter and make this brown a bit deeper good and do want to make this brown deeper oh using the same gradient don't want that in this own gradient I'm going to use a yellow. Press G and hold control to create a gradient stop. We're going to select this brown and at the end create this yellow. And then down here we have good. Now there's a major bend here, so I'm going to go ahead and just sever this bend. Good, and I'm just going to select this brown and then fade it to a brown to a lighter color here. Good. So just gonna go ahead and do similar things. Add a gradient stop here. As much as we have started with the yellow, let's start with the brown because it's coming from a bend. 
Let's make the brown as small as possible here. This is a bit lean. Let's see if we can straighten up the gradient. And straighten up here. Good. And then we're gonna go to here and make this yellow. Also. Okay, this looks about right. Could even use the brighter yellow too. Okay, um, our internal sheen is a little bit high colored, so it's gonna bring it down a bit. Just a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do underneath. Now underneath, you expect majority of it to be dark browns. You know, so the in a situation where it's covered, where it's cornered by two overlapping shapes right here, the bottom of the G and the top, you're gonna be, the top the top and the bottom are going to be darker shades, and you're gonna have like an orange shade in between. Something along these lines. add two more gradient stops to add um, a bit more authenticity to this and then just add this yellow and pull it across a bit yeah that's perfect and for this one we only have one overlapping shape so it's gonna have one brown area and it's gonna move to a darker area here Let's move up a bit Good. We can give it a slight white sheen here, or yellow sheen, Let's carry it down and make sure that the, um, the orange takes precedence, or that brownie orange. Okay, and so it looks like we have our first letter done. And the G is perhaps the most complicated one, so it will take the most time. You know, and don't don't be afraid to go back and um, take a look to see if everything is matching up the way that you intended it to. This is very important. brown down and I'm going to use the orange great I'm going to move on to the O which should be a straightforward linear gradient moving from dark from underneath the G to a orange you know of to a, a dark orange to a lighter one
the file on brown. Good, and just coming in here. Add one more gradient stop. Add this orange. Add another gradient stop. And I'm gonna make this a yellow. Uh, I'm gonna make this one a yellow too. Good. All right, so we have our golden text gradients completed. You know, and I know it's a bit tedious going through all the gradient work, but at least you get to see how it works. And I think that's important, you know, to the future of what you're going to do next. And when you take it on for yourself, undo other projects that require this sort of golden sheen, you can see how it works. Good, so the last thing I'm going to do is just create a drop shadow. So I'm going to duplicate, whoops, I'll select this and duplicate the text. And I'm just going to squash it. And then flip it. And let's give it a, the same black here at the edge of the radio gradient using the dropper tool and I'm just going to blow it out a little bit and drop it underneath good oh I think in my tutorial base I had it in the opposite direction I had it going this way right I had it going this way so I'm just going to do it this way and there we have our golden text type effect um i hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you have any questions be sure to ask them um if you have any um pointers that you can use to add to the tutorial i would appreciate that you know i really want to know how inkscape does the pixel count for the magnitude in the motion extension that would be interesting to find out so if someone knows that you can definitely leave that in the comments I definitely want to learn how they do it and or how it's calculated real time you know but if you enjoy this tutorial remember to smash that subscribe button and until I see you again get up and design a new door later